If you are into games like Wargame Red Dragon or World in Conflict, you need to stick around for this video and start tracking Broken Arrow if you're not already. In terms of being able to fulfill your fantasy of being an armchair general, this game really hits the spot from the wide variety of units, scale, and capabilities. It does everything good about Wargame and World of Conflict, but it does it better and with more newer units and features, as well as just overall look. If you're new to the genre or games like this, be warned though, it is not easy to master, so I wanted to start with a basic understanding video, especially if you're coming from my Tarkov channel. As a lifetime real-time strategy nerd, Broken Arrow has taken all of my focus over the last week as I got an opportunity to privately test this game with friends like Saucy Network, Devil Dog Gamer, Vulcan Gaming, Stealth, and more. It will be in open beta this week, so I figured I'd start on explaining what it is because I bet it can be confusing to some. Brass Tacks, this is a real-time strategy game. If you've played the like games, War Game, Red Dragon, and or World of Conflict, then you will be almost right at home. Broken Arrow is, in my opinion, a better, newer combination of the two. You can airborne and drop troops, vehicles, and supplies using cargo planes or large helicopters, as well as utilize laser-guided bombs, nap of the earth flight, and strategic weapons such as cruise missiles and someday tactical nukes. This is the most advanced RTS game at this scale ever built. I mean that by being able to use so many units and cross so much territory and yet still have control over a simple house-to-house -house fight or a single vehicle. This game allows you to devise a strategy through selecting a nation between USA and Russia and then a specialization from armor, mechanized, marine, and airborne. This is where the strategy begins as you can't do everything. You must choose what you want to have available to you. For example, if you don't pick armored, then you won't have the best tanks for your nation. And if you don't pick airborne, then you won't have the best planes available for your nation. You can pick armored airborne, but then you won't have the best infantry or artillery. Hence the strategy. You can field iconic people and machines from US Marine Raiders to Abrams tanks and F-35s with glide bombs to Russian Armada tanks, SU-57s and Mi-28s. Yes, they have those in this game, even if the real Russians don't, so we have a bit of fun here. Now, selecting these units is what we call making a deck, and we refer to each selection as a card. The game calls them battle groups, so that's where you can start. In the current build, you only have one choice for each nation, but this will change soon. So you will have to play as Marine Armored for US or Armored Airborne for Russia. That's it for now, but eventually each nation will have several specializations and new nations will become available like China, the UK, and Germany down the road. From there, you select what units you want to use and how many limited by role, cost, and availability. The best units will be limited in amount and cost a lot to use. The same goes for the weapons and armor you decide to equip them with. Deck building tutorials will be a separate video as it just genuinely requires it. But the overall concept is you earn points to spend on these units over time while in game and when the game starts you will have a thousand points to start with on average depending on the game mode so you can get some of these units to start. People call this the opener and has some of the most intensive theory crafting and planning to decks as if you roll a team in the opener you're setting yourself up for success while if you get rolled you need to have a plan to build it back and to be able to come back in your deck in order to make up for it if you lose a unit you will be able to call it back in based off of its availability that you've chosen but if you only have one unit then you will need to wait for it to become available again yes war game people your units will respawn over time after losing that unit your income takes a hit though as the less units you have the faster your points stack up but if you lost all of those units then it's not as good as if you had just waited to use your points and it's not based on how many objectives you hold or how many kills you got either it happens just automatically the speed at which it ticks is based on the total cost of units that you have deployed at any given time so there is a super effective strategy of waiting to call in units at the start of games then calling in massive amounts at once but you need to be careful because if you call in too few at the opening or if your opponents are too aggressive then you'll lose before you call anything out. You also can't just buy planes and be playing for free as every weapon that you use will cost you points. Every bomb once dropped, every missile once fired costs you points as well. And that's seen in the selection screen when you're building your deck. If you want your points to move up quicker or you don't want to spend points on supplies to repair damaged units and you can return them back to base and they will rearm repair then become available again quicker than if they had been destroyed. Keeping your units alive is extremely important in this game. Now in terms of sending things home planes are the only exception here as they must be returned to base before they run out of fuel if a plane runs out of fuel then it will fall out of the sky and the pilot or pilots will eject pilots will also eject if your plane gets shot down when traveling at subsonic speeds if you bring the pilot back to your base it will recoup some of the cost of the lost plane the objectives on each location mean almost nothing other than if you own them all at once you win you can go the entire game while the other team holds seven and then as long as you hold one more than 
than they do, at the end of the game, you win. If you hold the same amount, you draw, and if you capture them all, the game ends immediately. The way you win isn't just from simply capturing the point, though. You will still need to defeat the enemy team's units, which, depending on their skill level and coordination, can be easy or seemingly impossible. There will be single-player options as well as lots of tutorials and PvE game modes to allow you to play while learning. However, for the open beta this week, it will only be multiplayer. Welcome to the suck there on that one. This game in a multiplayer setting is on the same page as games like Tarkov and War Thunder for skill ceiling and learning. You will get annihilated over hundreds of hours and make little progress understanding what you did wrong until someday it clicks and you start handing out the beatings. Day one starts with understanding the tic-tac-toe of what beats what here. The top of the food chain is anything in the air. Planes are the most deadly and are better than ever with the weapon systems at their disposal. Choose and use them wisely. Armor is next and there's tanks with extremely heavy armor, deadly weapon systems, and even protection systems like APS which shoots ATTMs out of the air before they actually hit the tank. Artillery is the wild card here, being able to shoot and kill or disable anything on the ground, almost not being seen or shot at in return. We'll talk about that in a minute. Infantry are useful weapons teams, recon and stealthy in trees and urban environments. AA is useless against anything, but of course things in the air most of the time. If you do not bring any, you lose. It's as simple as that. Recon units allow you to see what's coming and seeing without being seen is the key to victory in the vast majority of games. Because if you can see it, you can shoot it. So if you shoot it more, you win. You will need to have recon at the front line at all times so you don't send your units blindly to their deaths. Planes get shot down by planes and AA. Helicopters get shot down by planes, AA, and ground units if they get too close. Machine guns, auto cannons, and even shoulder fired launchers that are intended for vehicles from infantry will engage helicopters in the game and are quite effective, especially over games like War Game. The chopper rush that you used to see in War Game isn't dead, but it's on life support for sure. Tanks get destroyed by tanks, ATGMs, specific types of bombs, and infantry when they get too close. Generally speaking, these three are again the top of the food chain though. If you are able to use planes, helicopters, or tanks to eliminate the enemy's AA, you can use planes and helicopters to destroy the rest of the things on the ground. If they have a lot of AA but aren't using enough planes or helicopters, you can usually push through with tanks, destroy their AA, and then you can use planes and helicopters to destroy the rest. Most equal footing teams in terms of skill level will win based off of sniping the other team's AA and then using air power to eliminate everything. But that is nowhere near everything that you can do. There's loads of other units, which we'll get to now. Artillery, which like I've said before, can shoot without being necessarily shot back, can be killed by anything once they do shoot. No matter what the type of artillery is, the opposing team can see where you shot that by the smoke trail or blast of the cannon. They can then shoot artillery or bomb that location with planes. So if you don't move your artillery after it shoots, it will die. Unless, of course, the other team is oblivious to it or not counter battery. Infantry can get killed by anything with a gun and, in my opinion, are not very effective in this game other than specific weapons teams and recon capacities. However, if you bring a lot and swarm points, then you can win games by causing the enemy to show their positions when they shoot at the infantry and use resources to eliminate them. AA is the most vulnerable unless you have ground attack capable weapons like machine guns, auto cannons, or dual use missiles. They work the same as artillery though, and once you shoot, you will be seen by the enemy no matter what. So try to move them around to avoid getting hit with artillery or standoff weapons. Remember what I said earlier, AA is the key to victory. If you kill the other team's AA, you can sweep them up with air power. Supply units are there to bring ammunition and health points back to your combat units. There is no fuel cost in this game outside of planes. If the enemy team can see your supply dump, they can hit it with artillery and destroy it, which will also do damage to the surrounding units depending on how much supply is there, sometimes a lot of damage. Units will get hurt and they will run out of ammunition. You need to resupply them. Keeping your units alive is absolutely vital in this game. There's some special and vital strategies as well as weapon systems to keep in mind. For planes, you have supersonic flight, nap of the earth flight, laser guided munitions, and seed. Afterburner flight is this button here. You can also use a hotkey for it if you want to set that up. This will allow your plane to go supersonic, meaning the plane moves much faster, making it more difficult to hit. The missiles fly faster and further, and bombs fly faster and further. It will run out of fuel quicker though, so pay attention to that, and get it back to base before it runs out. If you die in supersonic flight, your pilot does not eject. It dies. Nap of the Earth flight allows you to evade missiles and be more difficult to detect. If you're trying to run or hide, drop down. Laser guided munitions are insanely effective. Laser target with recon units or some planes can do it themselves for pinpoint accurate hits. Seed missiles or suppression of enemy air defense hones in on radar to destroy it, which brings
brings me to my next thing, radar and munition interception for AA. If you have a radar on your AA unit, then when you deploy it by clicking this button here or setting up a hotkey if you'd like to, you will be able to accurately reach further distances for targets. It will also allow some units to intercept things like cruise missiles, which if you're fighting against the United States, have many of them. Or if somebody is playing with the TU-160 on Russia, they will also have a lot as well. Now, with the radar turned on, you can be seeded. They can shoot seed missiles at you. Some units will be able to intercept seed missiles sometimes, but it's very difficult. I found the most success with the Russian Panzer. This icon right here is what tells you whether or not the weapon system with that unit you're looking at will be able to intercept. This section is also good because not everything can engage planes or helicopters. So if you're buying a unit for a reason, make sure it can do that thing that you're buying it for. And then also be prepared to play the mini game of hide and seek with radar and artillery and seed missiles trying to kill each other. Last thing here is you can attack a position by hitting P, the amount of times that you would like to shoot. So if you have laser guided bombs or artillery with let's say three rounds or bombs, hit P three times, then click three times where you want those rounds to go. Something that's extremely effective in another example here is if you're in range, if you have a F-35 with six storm breakers, call it out, hit the afterburner to make it fly faster and drop further away, click P six times, then click six times where you want those to land. As long as it doesn't get shot down, the plane will automatically go to the closest location to drop those munitions, drop on each precisely, and it will hit those spots precisely. From there, I tell the drop to the ground and then go home. Air power in this game is like nothing that you've ever played, especially not in war game. It is cool. Now, specific strategies like that are for another video though, as past that, there's literally decades worth of comprehension and theory crafting strategies to what works and what doesn't, but some things will always remain true. If you don't buy ground units, you lose. If you don't bring AA, you lose. If you don't resupply your units, you lose. If you don't support your teammates, you lose. The team that does recon better will win because if you can see it, you can shoot it. That's the basic understanding of Broken Arrow as it currently stands. If you're looking for guidance on how to build a deck or anything else, check these videos out here as well as the description and stay tuned to the channel for more. This game is just becoming available. It is just the beginning. Now, in terms of when you should be able to play, depending on when this video goes live, Broken Arrow should be available in open beta this week, January 31st. So follow the Steam page for updates. Follow my Twitter and join the Discord, both linked below, especially if you're looking for people to play with, join that Discord to support me. Check out my streams, click the buttons on the screen and give me feedback below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.